if the Bible is really the revealed word of God and it has the power that you say it has, why is it that millions of people can read it and know it and still die unbelieving? People believe many, many things. There are billions of people who today would believe in an autocratic government, a domineering government. There are people, we were in Iraq a few weeks ago, we were having lunch with a man who was involved in killing people. And they told us of some ISIS people who had come into that hospital. And the ISIS people were talking to each other, as soon as these people have made us well, we'll kill them. And to their own shock and surprise, they saw the love of these doctors and the nurses. And when they were made well again, they wanted to know what is it that makes them tick, why they think the way they do. You and I will not be the ultimate judge over any human being. We leave that in the judgment of God, and the Bible says the judge of all the earth will do that which is right. But for me not to tell them of the gospel of Christ would be like me finding a cure for cancer and walking through the hospital ward and seeing so many dying of cancer and not telling them what the answer really is and what the cure really should be. That's why the answer Jesus himself gave was willing to be crucified and willing to be laying down his own life and to die on the cross because what we need more than anything else in this world is the twin realities of grace and truth. Grace and truth. And that's the gospel message we take to the world. And rather than being daunted by the size of those who disagree with you, think of the miracle of your own changed life and your own transformed life and bring that message and let God be the ultimate judge. The judge of all the earth will do that which is right. We are given the privilege of telling his story. Many will turn away and walk away from it, but many will believe. And the blind man says, whether this person is who you tell me he is or not, all I know is I was blind and now I see. And that's the message we have to take to the world where many are blind and Christ offers for them to get the perspective of eternity not from the keyhole of time, but the keyhole of eternity, where you see the whole tapestry and the whole artwork of God. Leave the judgment to him. Give the answers he's given. And you don't change any life. If you change a life, somebody else will change them. Only God can change the heart of a person, and you leave that in God's hands. I have with me here the Encyclopedia of Biblical Errancy by C. Dennis McKinsey. And on page 171, uh, he writes, first by way of summary, because later he'll give all of the biblical references on the ensuing pages for what he's claiming here. The claims may sound surprising, but uh, all of the references are there to back them up. Uh, what he says is, is this, and I quote his words, God created evil. Evil came from the Lord. He deceived and told people to lie. He rewarded liars. He ordered men to become drunk. He rewarded the fool and the transgressor. He delivered a man, Job, into Satan's hands. He caused indecency. He spread dung on people's faces. He ordered stealing. He made false prophecies. He changed his mind. He caused adultery. He ordered the taking of a harlot. He killed people. He ordered the killing of people. He has a temper. Uh, he's often jealous. He practiced injustice. He repented. He played favorites. He sanctioned slavery. He degraded deformed people. He punished bastards for being illegitimate. He punished many for the acts of one. He punished children for their father's sins. He punished a man for following his orders. He prevented people from hearing his words. He supported human sacrifice. He ordered cannibalism. He demanded virgins as a part of the war of plunder. He ordered gambling. He required an unbethrothed virgin to marry her seducer. He ordered horses to be hamstrung. He sanctioned the violation of the enemy's women, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't agree with everything the author says here, and obviously he's not referring to God as depicted in the Quran here. Uh, he is referring to God as depicted in the Bible. And uh, many of his statements are in fact quite true, and if you read the uh, references that he has given and check them in the pages of the Bible, you will see that they are in fact so. So since that is the case, I think Dr. Shirosh is not uh, using a very good strategy by throwing stones because he lives in a glass house. And uh, so... <laughs> That is incest. With your own daughter, that's incest. With your own sister is incest. With your daughter-in-law is incest. Now you know what's incest. 
he says, you know, incest. He says, yeah, the dark stain on our society, on American societies. 13 percent, 13 out of every 100 white people, American Christians, they commit incest with their own daughters. They sleep with their own daughters, as, using them as wives, their own daughters. There's no backward nation on earth who does that. He's saying, he's crying. And in this book, in this book, he's giving us that in the Holy Bible, there are 10 cases of incest. In this holy book, as if this is a textbook on incest. If you want to know what, what type of incest you can do, get this book. It will tell you 10 different cases of incest. Son, father cohabiting with his daughters is here. Son with his mother is here. Father-in-law with his daughter-in-law is here. Brothers and sisters are here. In this holy book. But they want to push this down your throat. You see, you're going to go to hell with this Quran. You see, you haven't got it. You must put this book away and take this down. It will teach you ten different types of incest. It will teach you. This Quran can't. Wallah, it can't. There is not a single case of incest in this book to tell you. You know, you can do this and that and that and that. There's nothing here. But they're telling you, get rid of this book. Get this and it will take you to heaven. And it will take you to hell here and hell in the hereafter. Both. Jahannam both ways. Here, you'll be in hell. 8% of the whites of South Africa, they commit incest with their own daughters, 8%. That's what they tell us. Maybe more, but they tell us 8% of the white people in South Africa, Christians, they're committing incest with their own daughters. Americans, 13% they commit incest with their own daughters. And that nation is worried about you, want to take you to heaven. They are in hell now, and they want to take you to heaven.